jump right into it with an economic deep dive. Art Laffer joins us now. Dr. Art Laffer, former Reagan economic advisor, a guy behind the Laffer curve, makes sense, and uh, author, brilliant mind, all that good stuff. Dr. Laffer, appreciate you being with us. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you for having me, by the way. I love your show. Thank you. Well, you have excellent taste in radio as well as being an economic <laughs> genius. So tell us this. Uh, tell us this, sir, if you would. Uh, if, if we were to give a, you know, not just the talking points, obviously, that's why we have you on, to give us the reality of it, right? The Biden Kamala economy of the last four years, if you were prepping, let's say, Trump to go into a debate and make the case about what it is, what has actually gone wrong? What has gone right? I mean, what is your scorecard for the U.S. economy under the stewardship of Biden the last four years? Well, you know, if I were Trump doing this, I, I would first place tell the story of what I did uh, as Trump uh, during my first term. And it, it's my opinion and uh, as an economist, and I'm just talking about economics, and that's it, is it was the single best first term of any president in U.S. history uh, from the standpoint of economics. And the energy policy was terrific. Uh, as you know, we were energy independent because of decontrol, because of his policies there. Uh, uh, Biden and Harris went the exact opposite direction. Uh, he also uh, he also did an amazing job with Operation Warp Speed. I mean, he developed a vaccine in 10 months, a little less than 10 months. It was a phenomenal vaccine by spending some money and by getting rid of all the red tape. It, people expected it would take six years or so, and it didn't. He did it in 10 months. I mean, amazing. Right to try. You know, the idea that if you've got a terminal disease, you can try any drug you'd like to do and not have to have FDA approval. I think that was phenomenal as well. Uh, one, I think, that was done in the debate with uh, – with Vance and, and Waltz was that medical transparency, price transparency, the executive order. Uh, Trump did a phenomenal job on that. Uh, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act worked perfectly. I mean, it, it really did pay for itself in the first two years, and it brought the rates down, made us much more competitive, led to firm economic growth, uh, and there were no delays, no mistakes made in that bill. Um, the death tax was reduced quite substantially. All of that was done. The personal income tax dropped from uh, 39 6 to 37 There were a couple of pass-throughs there. I mean, he, he did a superb job. And then you compare that with Biden, who, who raised tax rates, uh, who could, did a lot of spending. Uh, you know, Trump did spending, by the way, once the pandemic hit, which I don't think should have been done. At least a lot of it shouldn't have been. But Biden did it the whole time there and just wasted the money. And, and I think the operation of the Fed under Biden, uh, under Powell uh, in Biden's term, led to very high inflation as well. So uh, the way I take it is in almost every single area of economics, Trump far exceeds uh, Biden, not only in volume, but in direction. I think Trump did tax cuts. Biden did tax increases. Gover uh, government spending, Trump did tax spending cuts until the pandemic. Uh, and Biden did the increases right from the get-go. I mean, look at defense. Again, the same thing there. The, the one thing I would really juxtapose were I – where I uh, uh, Trump and Biden, uh, where I Trump and Biden or Harris, is the role played by, you know, by by peace through strength, uh, the sort of the old Reagan doctrine of peace through strength, the, where Trump really followed it precisely, and Biden and Harris did just the opposite policy. Uh, they did uh, war through war through weakness, and so that's where that's where I'd come out on the on the two teams and. Trump is just amazing on economics and on international politics. Okay, I wanted to have you on, Dr. Laffer, and I appreciate it. I've gotten to meet you a couple of times. You live in Nashville. I think you got 163 grandkids, which I'm, I'm glad to have your genes because uh, we need as much intelligence and economics as, as we can. Uh, but, but I want to dive in because you're so good at explaining this. You have advised or been involved with high-level politicians for – 40, 50 years. I mean, like you said, 55, going back to 55. Reagan. 55. First, I was in 1970. I was in the White House as George Shultz's right-hand person in 1970. Okay, going all the way back to 1970. I look and hear Kamala Harris speak, and I think to myself, she is functionally, it seems to me, economically illiterate, at least with what she is saying publicly. She's talking about price controls on grocery stores. You know this. Grocery stores yep. have one of the lowest level profits we've got in any industry out there. 
She says that price gouging is going on and seems to be citing things like what would happen with Hurricane Helene. We have laws that are in place that you shouldn't be able to suddenly charge $10 a gallon uh, for a, a, a milk or for a gallon of gas or whatever else because there's a natural disaster. She doesn't seem to understand what those price cap regulations are associated with. Since 1970, where does Kamala Harris rank to you from an economic policy perspective? Let's say there's just people out there making a decision. Hey, I just want the best economy out there because I think a rising tide lifts all boats. That's what the president should do. That's what the federal government should do. Where does Kamala rank in your experience? Well, I'm I'm 100 percent with you on the rising tide. The Kennedy model is that's the perfect model for this. To be honest with you, I mean, if you judge her by Biden, uh, that she was complicit in all of the Biden policies. You know, she's a big spending liberal Democrat, clear and simple, and buying votes from other groups and causing the economy to way underperform. I mean, yeah. that would be the perfect example. Price controls is just something she naturally grabs to. Uh, because she's been raised in government all of her life. So she thinks that if there's a problem, always go to government for a solution. And price controls, I don't, I don't think she's aware of all the problems we had with price controls under Nixon, and they just didn't work. They caused all sorts of dislocations. And I don't think she understood. She's just trying to, she's just trying to explain or trying to justify or trying to make excuses for why there was such high inflation under Biden-Harris. And that you get the gougers, et cetera, when in fact it was it was her economic policies that slowed economic growth. It was hers and Biden's uh, economic monetary policies that increased the monetary base, the balance sheet sheet of the Fed. I mean, what was it in uh, in 2000? And- and eight, I think the balance sheet was at eight fifty-eight billion, something like that, or fifty-eight billion. And uh, at its peak under Biden Harris, it was at nine point three trillion. I mean, is it any wonder we had in high inflation under them? That was exactly what happened. And they also caused the economy to slow way, way down, which further added to inflationary pressure. So th- this is what she's trying to do. And she's just trying to find excuses and see if something sticks by throwing it against the wall. I'm not sure how she'll behave once she's in office, though. What do you think, Dr. Laffer? Let's pretend that COVID doesn't happen. Trump, in February of 2020, I think we had the strongest economy in the history of the United States. White, black, Asian, Hispanic wages are rising. Inflation's 1.4% or whatever the heck it was. 2.5% mortgage rates. People have more money in their pocket. If COVID doesn't happen, And we're having this conversation right now. How good do you think a second term, because I think Trump would have won without COVID for sure. How good do you think a second Trump term would have been for the economy? And where do you think we'd be sitting right now? Well, you know, I I think everyone agrees with you that Trump would have won in a landslide, maybe get 49 states. I think even Saturday Night Live conceded that time and time until the COVID hit. And the COVID became the perfect uh, opportunity opportunity for the Democrats to try to knock him down, and they succeeded in that. If it hadn't have occurred, I think uh, we would have had the best presidency ever in U.S. history. Uh, his first term was singularly the best in economics of any presidency in its first term, period. And I really went through a bunch of them there with you, but there was a lot more in deregulation, 10 deregulations for everyone, the Supreme Court that he appointed. And I'm not talking social issues now here. I'm talking just economics. They reined back all the regulatory agencies to not be able to legislate through regulations through the regulatory agencies. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, all of this stuff. I think Trump with the Supreme Court he had, with the Congress he would have had as well, uh, could have done a job even better than Reagan did on the second term. And Reagan's second term was spectacular. I mean, Reagan cut the highest tax rate in his two terms from 70% to 28%. He raised the lowest rate from 12.5% to 15 He went from 11 tax brackets to two tax brackets. He cut the corporate rate from 46 to 34. I mean, he got rid of all those deductions, exemptions, exclusions, and loopholes. I mean, we got a vote in the Senate uh, for the bill for the 86 Tax Act of 97 to 3. We got all the libs to vote with us because it was the right thing to do. I think Trump could have matched that easily and done an even better job than Reagan did if he had not had the pandemic and been elected. So I, I'm really very sad that he wasn't reelected without the pandemic. I mean, 
it would have been just a phenomenal period. We would have been, we wouldn't have had any of these wars in the Middle East. We wouldn't be in the Ukraine. Uh, we wouldn't have Houthi rebels firing rockets at our ships or any of that stuff. It would have been peace through strength. And the strength is in the economy as well as defense. And strength well, is speaking a Speaking of Art Laffer and Art, I'm sorry, Art, I just wanted to yeah, say, if you could take, take us uh, for a look ahead, let's say that the American people do the right thing and Donald Trump does win four more years. Um, a lot of it will be the reinstituting of policies that you've been discussing that were so successful, but what would you add to that? Or, or what would you say would be top of the economic agenda for Trump term two to really get things cooking again? I really think price transparency, health transparency, uh, you know, there is a huge, uh, you know, we've had a huge reduction in our life expectancy relative to the OECD over the last 50 plus years and a huge increase in the cost of health care uh, over that same time period, again, relative to the OECD. I mean, we have been suffering enormously because we don't have price transparency. You don't know what the prices are. You don't know what the qualities are. It's all hidden in insurance companies, policies, et cetera. And we need price transparency, which I think Trump should do. Uh, I think Trump will do it, and I think it will have an enormous impact. Remember, health care is something like 20 percent of GDP, and to have a non-market economy as 20 percent of the GDP is just killing us. I mean, literally and figuratively. That, I think, is the single most important thing to do. We're talking to Dr. Art Laffer. Last question for you, and actually my 16-year-old, who is a junior in high school right now, wanted me to ask you about this uh oh he's he's fired up about the national debt and the concept he does debate and the concept of modern monetary theory and he wants to know and i said i'm talking to a super smart uh economist uh, on the show he knows who you are he studied uh, your work i think he's going to major in economics when he gets older he wants to know at what rate does our national debt become so crippling that no matter what political party you uh, are, are supporting, it becomes incredibly difficult to get the economy rolling because of the weight of that national debt. I think we're miles and miles and miles away from that type of crux. Uh, if you look at debt, you should never compare it to GDP. You know, everyone says it's 120 percent of GDP or whatever the numbers are. You should always compare debt to wealth or debt service to GDP. If you look at debt to wealth, you know, it's too high, but it's not critical. Don't jump out the window. If you look at debt service to GDP, uh, it's still too high, but we have plenty of room to be able to grow our way out of this debt. And remember always that it, it, it's not debt that's the problem. Debt is a tool. Uh, it's the spread. If you use the spending to pay people not to work, uh, that kills your economy. If you use the spending to create jobs, output employment by cutting taxes and by increasing defense, as we did under Reagan, it's the biggest boon to economic growth you can imagine. So I would tell your son, you know, don't don't get overly uh, worried about the debt. It's not a debt problem. We can grow out of this debt with good policies very easily. Uh, and it shouldn't be people shouldn't be on the edge of their chairs jumping out the windows. It's it's not the biggest problem. We need a low rate, broad based flat tax, spending restraints, sound money, minimal regulations, and free trade. And this economy will take care of debt in minutes. I love it, Dr. Art Laffer. Appreciate you being with us, sir. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. And say hello to that child of yours. <laughs> I will for sure, sir. Thank you. I hope I, I hope the answer was okay for him. Uh, he'll love it. He's in class we'll right now, back. but we'll play it for him. Yeah, <laughs> it's a deal. Thank you. And my friends, there's a lot of instability overseas, and there's still this chance that you might have four more years of a Democrat administration. I know. I don't think it's going to happen, but it could happen. And then the printing would be going on. Inflation would rise. What can you do now to prepare uh, so that you can protect your savings? Gold, my friends. Gold is a smart investment strategy. Just look historically. I don't just mean the last year or 10 years. Look the last 1,000 years. Gold is a store of value. And when you invest a portion of your savings in gold, you are diversifying against the effects of inflation, crazy out-of-control spending, all of it. And Birch Gold can also assist you in converting an IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold. That's right, Birch Gold. That's who I trust when it comes to gold purchases or transferring your IRA into gold. You don't have to pay a penny out of pocket to do that, by the way. 
Text my name, Buck, for more information. You get your free info kit on gold. Text Buck to 989898. No obligation, just information on how you can take action today to fortify your savings. A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers. Text BUCK to 989898 for your free info kit today. 